so <coughs> welcome to this part of the lecture that is part 3 of lecture A and as we saw in the last lecture what we did was uh, we saw that how we can represent uh, the just to just to uh, maintain the maintain the continuity we saw that uh, uh, we saw that how 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 this resistive circuits are uh, are or the the various elements are represented that is r l c elements are represented in phasor form okay and i also emphasized on the on the phasor form representation as it gives very elegant representation in a form of something like v is uh, i is equal to v by r or v is equal to i or something like that as opposed to the sinusoidal form okay uh, so this is what we had for uh, that is in phasor representation again I told that it is again V by R form okay this one is V by R form and uh, this is what we did V by R form except for R here I told you was minus J by X C okay so uh, this is what we saw for inductor also it was similar to V by R form here again and then we also saw how the equivalent circuits will remain uh, look like if you have R, L, and C elements in it. They will come in the form of a, in form of their impedances uh, in the phasor domain. Okay, and it will become increasingly increasingly difficult as you go for circuit analysis in sinusoidal terms. Now let us. Uh, we also saw R, L, C circuit. Uh, the three R, L, and C elements uh, were in series, and we saw that uh, how you get that. Uh, you can write z as r plus jx that is now our impedances or the resistances can be complex numbers instead of simple real numbers impedances and admittances are going to be complex numbers so continuing from that uh, we'll see a parallel uh, rlc circuit and in a series rlc circuit we wrote kvl in parallel r circuit rlc circuit we will write uh, KCL here that is Kirchhoff's current law and let us see how this matches with the uh, simple DC analysis which we have been doing that is resistive circuits so here it is a phasor circuit and R L and C in in uh, parallel and this is the I and this is divided I into three parts I R I L and R I C and I am writing KCL equation that this current I is equal to IR plus IL plus IC and as we did in earlier form you can see that I am writing IR as V by R okay R is the resistance and this IL as V by XL okay LJXL is now a new type of resistance so to say uh, reactive inductive reactance and this is V upon minus JX is again a new type of uh, resistance or you can say capacitive reactance and it is the equations are written exactly the same way as we did in a DC analysis okay except for the uh, fact that the equations are now complex equations uh, containing uh, that is equation contain complex number and this if you want we can write this as VG so 1 by R is written as G or you call conductance conductance and similarly this is called susceptance 1 by XL or 1 upon XC is called sex susceptance so G and BL minus BC it is as simple as we have in it so I is equal to I is equal to conductance something like conductance in 2V this is the form of equation here which is true in case of in case of DC also okay we write G instead of Y instead of G here in case of a uh, resistive circuit now let us look at the phasor diagram here we are taking V as a reference phasor reference phasor and uh, if I take this as a reference phasor then let's say this I which is going is this current okay uh, having a angle theta and we are taking it at, at as lagging 
uh, it is uh, it may be leading or lagging but here we are taking it as lagging you can also draw the same diagram for for leading also assuming that uh, the capacitive current is more than the inductive current anyhow you you, you can assume any one of them uh, depending on the situation so this is leading current and uh, this uh, uh, leading current and for this voltage if you see the uh, current in the resistance this voltage remains same on all the three places okay across all the three elements the voltage remains same so the current flowing in r would be in phase with v so that is what is shown ir is in with phase with v, v. whereas current flowing in the inductor this current will be lagging 90 degrees that is il is lagging 90 degrees you can obviously write the value of a v upon j x l so that is the value and it is basically uh, lagging by 90 degrees and similarly ic is lagging the same v uh, leading the same v by uh, 90 degrees so that is we have drawn this uh, phasor diagram through the knowledge of the representation which we have done in the earlier uh, part of this lecture okay so these are this is you can say a kind of uh, phasor representation of currents in this particular uh, particular circuit and to complete this representation what I am doing here is now uh, this you you have total current IC is in the capacitor IL is in the inductor and they are uh, exactly 180 degrees out of phase so they are subtracted with each other on the same axis and this is when you add with IR this resistance IR you get this I so that is the relation between the i flowing and the three currents flowing into the in the circuit now with this knowledge of representation let us try to solve some problems simple problems uh, for ac circuits so here is example so you have a rlc circuit here where this is the inductor value 0 0.05 henry and this is 20 ohms given this is c and this is the current flowing in this is 5 angle 0 okay so the first part is find the value of c if this v is this much 100 plus j 200 that is a phasor of 100 plus j 200 at and the frequency of this voltage source is 1200 radians you have to find the value of c so that the current 5 angle 0 flows into the circuit Okay. the second part is for same kind but v is different and omega is different same part but it's slightly different. but the uh, question is you have to find anyway the value of c so for this value of l 0 0.01 we will find the reactance value because we know omega so we can find the reactance value for omega is equal to 1200 that is xl is equal to l omega so this is 60 ohm uh, impedance wise okay or you can call it as JXL or J, J60 ohms and XC is 1 by C omega or 1 by 1200 C now Z bar can be written as V bar by I bar V and I are known and this is 5 angle 0 and and that should be equal to this much that is 20 plus J60 minus jxc this is the impedance of the whole circuit which we are seeing so when you uh, see this impedance this is the value of this part that is 20 plus j40 when you divide this by 5 angle 0 uh, should be equal to this and that suggests that xc should be equal to 20 and now you can equate 20 and find the value of this one which comes out to be 24000 farad so this is how you use the knowledge of XL and XC or you can say phasor representation to get the value of C. Now let's see the B part here. In a similar fashion you can find exactly the same way. So XL is now 200 times L. It's trying to suggest uh, uh, the difference in values of C for different frequencies. Okay, So here the value of frequency is different. So here you have 10 ohm inductor. 
because the frequency has reduced so you have 200 times L whereas earlier it was 1200 omega was 1200 and XC is 1.200 C and again you can see 100 by 5 angle 0 is 20 and this should be equal to this much that is the uh, impedance of the circuit should be equal to 20 that means this two should cancel out then only you can have 20 20 barabar. So uh, this gives you XC should be equal to 10 ohms and you just go the same way and possibly you get this value which is 500 microfarad. So this is uh, one example another example is this one which we will solve. So you, you look at this circuit first and then we'll go further. So the question is about this circuit. Here you have to find the value of R. Here this is there is a source of 240 50 hertz source. So this is F equal to 50 hertz. Uh, and this is supplying current to 6 ohm and 0 0.255 Henry inductor and a resistance which is unknown and a capacitor which is unknown. So you have to find the value of R and C. Okay. Uh, given that vb and VA. vb is three times va so this is vb that is resistance across resistance and inductor this pair is vb uh, voltage and this is va voltage and this relation is given that vb is three times va and we have to find r and c so <coughs> first thing is we'll represent circuit in the according to the things given to us uh, according to things given to uh, given to us this is 240 volt 50 hertz this is 6 ohms so i can calculate this as 8 ohms that is you can calculate this as omega l l is this much and omega is 2 pi 50 so 100 times pi that is somewhere around 314 or so and you multiply with uh, f uh, f is there you multiply with 0.255 it comes uh, roughly to this value j8 ohms and this is r and c and other thing which is given as information to us is this is va this is at any angle it is va then this vb is in quadrature and it is three times so i am showing it three times this is va value v i am talking about the magnitude so the three vas make make the magnitude of vb and it is at 90 degrees so taking this information the total voltage vb plus va should be equal to 240 volts okay now that is the applied voltage and that total drop and then uh, according to this uh, relation, I can write uh, this Pythagoras, uh, this one that is VA square plus VB square should be equal to 240 square. And now I can calculate the values of uh, uh, VA, VA here, that is VA comes about how much? VA is somewhere like this and that this is what you have VA, that is 75.9 volts and 3 times VA is VB that is 227.7 volt. Please remember we are talking about VA and VB in magnitude. So these are magnitudes only. We have not talk about, talked about what is the phase. Okay. And we know that VB is at 90 degrees phase to VB. Now from the information given uh, we also know that uh, VB should be equal to I into 6 plus J. So I is no if I is known then the voltage VB should be equal to I plus 6 plus J. So it should satisfy this VB should V is equal to IR and that is what I am trying to put VB is known and this is this one. This is again I am I have calculated only the only the magnitude okay that is that comes out to be something like 22.8 amperes. So magnitude of the current is also known 22.8 amperes and uh, VB and VA magnitudes are known but what was the question question was to find R and C so all right so now what I am doing here is with that information about VA and VB I am trying to make a, a phasor diagram so this is VA okay some angle 
and this is VB at 90 degrees to VA uh, that is 227 volts and this VB is basically sum of IR so this if this is I which is taken as reference so I am taken as reference so my I is at angle 0 okay so this I which I just calculated which is 22 point whatever 22.8 ampere is actually uh, my reference so this is effectively at 0 so I reference is at 0 and uh, now I calculate I into a 6 ohms I 6 so 22 into 6 ohms plus J times I and that gives me VB okay so uh, that is the phasor diagram here similarly we have phasor diagram for this part also now the important thing is what will be this angle that is phase angle between I and the voltage VB so we, we can just take help of this also this is I and this is VB and what should be the phase angle between I and VB okay so if you see the phase angle between I and VB will be determined by so if you have R and L like this and the voltage across it is VB and this is I okay then the phase angle if this is JXL and this is R so I will be equal to VB and talking about phases VB upon j x l okay so uh, so if i am taking i as reference so i is at angle 0 okay and this is v b bar and this is j x not j x l rather j x l plus r this r let me write r l because it is with l so j x l plus r l or I can write VB as I angle 0 into JXL plus RL okay so this VB this is already at angle 0 it is the angle of VB is decided by XL and R and the angle of VB with respect to tan inverse uh, with respect to Y0 will be tan inverse XL by R okay so that is what we are trying to have this is reference so xl by 6 or 8 by 6 will give me the value of phi lr so this angle we know and that angle come to be 53.1 degrees tan inverse 8 by 8 6 and if i know this angle i can know this angle because this total angle is 90 so that is subtracted here to so theta cr okay angle between cr that is this part that is VA this part CR part that angle will be equal to 36.9 that is 90 minus that so once I know angle CR 36.9 I know that that is also equal to tan inverse XC by R okay XC by R and that gives me the ratio of XC by R is 0 0.75 also I know that I into Z that is this magnitude of VA okay this magnitude of VA is I times Z and I know the value of I I know the value of ZC is not known but uh, the uh, that can be written as R square plus X square and this is 75.9 and this total R square plus X square is this much 75 by 9 upon 22 by 8 or in a different terms it is this and from this we, I also know that X C and R has this relation 0.75 ratio that I have applied and I get this R equal to 2.664 and similarly I can find X C has this much and if you want to find C then you have to write this 1 by C omega should be equal to X C and uh, you can find the omega is uh, 
314 times 314 times c 2 pi f f is 50 so 314 times c and that gives you c as this much so for the given situation you can find the value of r and c so this completes the example for this problem let's take a simpler one which suggest uh, some kind of current division in case of ac circuit here uh, what is given here is there are two impedances now here as i told you impedances are going to be complex number here so z1 and z2 are the two impedances 10 plus j15 is z1 and 6 minus j8 is z2 and they are connected in parallel and the 15 angle 0 current is flowing into this circuit and we have to tell what is i1 current and i2 current okay so this is to be calculated and also how much is v so this if you see it is a uh, beauty of representation uh, in phasor form that we can see specifically uh, current division ha ha happening over here okay i1 plus i2 is i3 and that is 15 angle 0 and we have to just uh, according to the ratios if you remember current division rule i1 will be this is i1 so this impedance upon the total impedance that much weightage or 15 angle 0 uh, would be flowing in i1 uh, flowing as i1 so this is how it i am just trying to also show if you th see this this is the current division formula which we have been doing except for there earlier it was r1 r2 and so on here it is z2 z1 and so on okay so this is this is the formula if you want to find i1 then uh, you multiply z2 upon z1 plus z2 this ratio and with i i and if you want to find i2 then z1 uh, and z1 plus z3 z2 ratio into i1 this is dc current division you also saw in dc form and that is being applied here so 15 angle 0 if i want to find i1 and 15 angle 0 and this ratio and i'm trying to show you the calculations uh, just for completeness because sometimes calculations can be tricky for phasor form okay so you can just see how we are doing here this is in phasor form this is in rectangular form this is 6 plus j over 8 this form is called rectangular form we have already discussed so in rectangular form you can do additions very easily so if you want to do addition of two phases then you first represent them in the rectangular form and then you add them that is what is being done here over here <coughs> once that addition or subtraction is over now when multiplication or division comes in then it is always better to represent your uh, uh, rectangular form phasers into phasor form okay or polar form rather you would call it so this is polar form of phasor representation 15 angle 0 and this is now j6 plus 7 8 is uh, magnitude you can calculate so 6 square plus 8 square under root is 10 square and that you take root <clears throat> and this is the angle 10 inverse similarly this is also represented in polar form and polar form division and multiplication becomes quite simple so this is 15 you multiply the magnitudes divide the magnitude as in the case may be and this are uh, these are the angles so if you have a division you subtract the angles so this is 23.6 so it is subtracted over here this was already minus 15.3 this was 0 so if you want you can write 0 over here that is to be added 0 plus minus 15.53.1 and so on so that is how you make the calculation and once you make this calculation it comes out to be this so you can represent either in polar form if you want to normally i1 and uh, v's are normally represented in polar form magnitude and phase so similarly uh, I am not calculating I2 because you can always have a similar formula and put it and get the I2 also. Uh, I will show you how to get V. So V is I1 into Z1. So this is I1 and this is Z1. 
I am multiplying the two to get the voltage over here V is equal to IR fashion and again you can see the calculation here this is the uh, current 8.59 is the current oh sorry this is I2 sorry this is I1 and I2 I have written the answer not calculated that you can calculate and get the value of I2 this is I1 in fact so the result the result of this is this sorry it is not I1 this is I2 so I have given the answer you can check by finding I2 from here anyway so now I1 into I1 is I1 into angle of I1 and I1 into Z okay I1 into Z1 so this is Z1 if you remember it comes out to be 18.03 I don't know if somewhere it has been this is this if you Z1 I1 into Z1 so this is Z1 and Z1 of course I have not calculated here but if you calculate you get 18.03 into 56 and again you can just to emphasize the calculation in phasor form if you have multiplication then phasor form is good so you represent in phasor form first and then you multiply the magnitudes and add the phasors that is how multiplication of phasors happen so minus 76.7 plus 556.3 and this is the voltage v so i feel this completes the example so we'll stop it here thank you